Hey everybody, it's John Gregory. Just thought I'd do a brief little video on the construction of the sink. Uh, I've started on that. What you're seeing here on the sawhorses is the front and back panel. These are eight feet long and about seven, no, eight inches tall. And what I've done is I got these poplar one by one uh, boards that are three feet long. They're exactly one inch by one inch. And I've put them on here at a very slight angle. At this end, they are a half inch from the what will be the bottom of the sink. And at this end, they are three quarters of an inch. So I'll have a quarter inch drop in the eight feet. Now I know that's not very much, but this sink is not meant to hold a lot of water. It's more meant to contain the mess, so there's just a slight slope. So when I do have to rinse it out, it will drain to the lower end. Now that I've got these in place, I will uh, go on to the next step, which is putting the cleats, what I'm calling the cleats, on the end pieces, which are just slightly longer than 30 inches. Actually, they're, it'll be 31 and a half inches long, and they will butt up to each of these ends. So when I do the frame, I'll have the cleats on there like this, and then I can drop the bottom of the sink into that frame and screw and glue it in. So I'll be back uh, with the next step. step. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is the second step in the process. As you saw in the earlier video, I had the cleats on the front and the back section. And these pieces right here are 31 and a half inches long. And I put cleats on the inside of those. One of them at one end, the cleats are one half inch, and at the other end, they're three quarters of an inch. So what'll happen, these will butt up against the end of these two long pieces, the front and the back, and will be screwed in. And then um, the other one will go to the other end, and that will leave me the inside dimensions of 30 inches wide and eight, uh, eight feet long or 96 inches long. And you'll notice here that on these boards, on the outside, I put a chalk line. And that is a reference to tell me where to put the screws that hold the bottom of the sink in. So what I wanna do is the cleats are just for it to rest on when I get the, the bottom down into the box. And then once I get it resting in there, I can drill holes, countersunk holes through here and run the screws through the front, the back, the sides, and into the edge of the bottom of the sink. But it's very important that I get this reference line so I don't have the screws sticking out, you know, maybe piercing through to the bottom, to the surface of the floor of the sink. So, at any rate, um, I'll be back when I uh, get the box put together. All right, the box is complete. It looks pretty good. Everything lined up, everything is square even though there's a little even though there's a little bit of a a warp in the the board that's okay we'll straighten that out the pleats are all level and even so my next step is to drop the bottom in make sure it fits like it should which it should and uh, then we'll start going around and countersink drill the holes along the chalk lines to really hold that the bottom of the sink in. Um, trying to decide whether I need to put some supports in there. I don't, I think I'm gonna be okay because this sink is not meant to hold any weight. It's not like I'm gonna get up on it and stand in it. It's not made for that. It's not meant to hold a lot of water. It's to contain the mess is what it is and a small flow of water if anything, so. All right, next step is get the bottom of the sink in. All right, the bottom is in. You can see there's a slight gap, but if you look here, it's tight there, it gaps, and it's tight here. So essentially, this whole board is warped out. The other side is fairly straight, so when I put the screws in, it will fill that gap, Everything's gonna be tight. Now, 
you want it tight, but it doesn't have to be perfect because when I get this actually in the dark room and I'm going to coat it, I'm going to put three coats, well, two, maybe three coats of epoxy garage floor paint. And I'll also caulk all the seams. And I'm going to coat both inside and out of the side of the sink. So this is, uh, this is going to work just great. Just a little test. I threw my 18 by 22 trays in the sink and you can see that I've got plenty of room for three, actually probably four with room to spare. So this is awesome. This is going to work really, really well. Um, yeah, I can do 16 by 20 prints. Probably get some bigger trays. I've got enough room, but I, I think 16 by 20 is probably the largest I would ever do. But anyway, I'm excited. Okay, the box is complete. See, I have drywall screws, or actually decking screws, um, about every five to six inches, all the way down the side. Same on the ends. Dark over here. And all the way down that side. The seams are pretty darn tight, with the exception of this corner. Not really sure what happened there. Maybe we got a little off on our cuts, but that's easily filled with caulk. As you can see, the bow on this side over here is gone, it's tightened up. It's a little bit of a gap down there. And while this might not be absolutely perfectly square, um, it's going to do the trick. It's going to fit really nicely right over there. So next step will be to drill the hole for the drain, which will be somewhere in here. This is the low end of the sink. Um, just got to figure out where I, where I want to put it. Because it's a low volume drain, I'm actually just going to use a bar sink drain, just like that. It's pretty nice. It's a brushed nickel. Uh, it should work quite nicely. Um, so anyway, next step is to build the stand. I've got the plans for that. I'm going to basically build the stand the exact same way I built this table that my uh, dry mount press is mounted on. Same style. The difference is that these legs will come up about a half inch above the spans so that when the sink rests on the stand, of course this top won't be there, it'll sit down over these legs and hold it into place because there's just a little bit of a, a gap underneath here to hold it in place. I don't want to screw it to the stand. I just want it to rest on there. And this is the way I did it before. It worked great. I'm also going to take some one by two poplar or pine and put an edge around the side, all the way down the front and down this side. That's the back side of the sink. And I will take a router and smooth that over so that I have something to rest my arms on and uh, uh, lean against without having this bare three-quarter inch plywood right here. So All right, that's all for this one Guys keep on fixing